Hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webcast. My name is Andrew Barber, and I'm a senior contributing editor here at eSchool News. I'll be acting as the moderator for today's presentation, which is sponsored by Fuel Education. And today we're going to be discussing how California schools can use the flexibility of Fuel Education's career and technical education courses to launch or enhance their own CTE programs. And we're also going to view a live course demo of Fuel Education's Career Readiness Pathways. Now, before I hand things over to our speaker for today, I just want to take a few moments to highlight a couple of items about the console we'll be using today. Uh, first, today's event will be recorded. Uh, in a couple of days, we'll send out an email to everyone uh, on the call today uh, that contains a link to the recorded event, and you'll also be able to download a PDF of the presentation from that same email. And second, please ask questions. You don't feel as if you have to wait until the end at any time during the presentation. If you have a question, just type it into the Q&A box on your console and hit the Submit button. And I hope we'll have about 10, maybe 15 minutes at the end when our speaker can address your questions. We also have a chat function, which you can launch from that blue group chat icon down at the bottom of your screen. And please use chat to talk among yourselves or to contact me or the eSchool News team uh, with any technical issues or any other concerns for that matter. But please don't use the chat function to ask our panelist questions. He's simply not going to have time to monitor the chats while he's presenting. So if you have a question for him, please use the Q&A panel instead. I also want to quickly draw your attention to the additional resources panel on your console where you can access a flyer about Fuel Ed's California Career Readiness Pathways. And you can also read more about Fuel Ed and California CTE. And with that out of the way, let me introduce you to today's speaker. Daniel Foreman is an education consultant with Fuel Education. And he partners with districts, schools, and teachers to provide professional development and support for Fuel Ed solutions in the classroom. And before joining Fuel Education, Dan worked as the District Instructional Technology Coordinator for the Alexandria City Public Schools. And during his tenure there, he coordinated the creation and expansion of the school division's one-to-one -one computing program to 10,000 students in grades 4 through 12. Uh, he also managed a team of 16 technology integration specialists and handled technology PD for 1,000 teachers. Welcome, Dan. It's a real pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. So what we're going to do today is talk about uh, career readiness pathways with Fuel Education. And Fuel Education, who we are and what our mission is, is to partner with school districts uh, to fuel personalized learning and transform the educational experience for students. Um, through online learning and blended learning instruction. Uh, so at this point, Fuel Education uh, has been improving outcomes uh, across the board and partnered with many students and uh, teachers and school systems uh, throughout the country. Uh, and we have shown some very large growth. So for example, at PSD Global Academy that is partnered with Fuel Education, uh, they've had 240% of typical growth with uh, academic progress. And uh, the graduation rate doubled soon after uh, Carver, uh, Carver began uh, using Fuel Education online courses. And then uh, at Spring Studio in Colorado Springs is a blended learning school that has partnered with Fuel Education and using Fuel Education uh, curriculum and content. And as of the 2014-2015 school year, you can see there that their graduation, uh, they're having 78% of their students going um, directly to college following graduation. And it is a fully blended learning school. Um, beyond just our career and technical education program, which is just one piece of uh, this much broader uh, product line that we have, we offer everything uh, to meet the needs of students pre-K all the way through 12th grade uh, and able to customize a solution to meet the needs of your teachers, your district, however and, and whatever it might be that you identify uh, is part of your needs. But today, we're going to focus on this career and readiness pathways piece. So before we dig in too deep, let's talk about trends. Where is career and technical education heading? 
why is it becoming so important and why are so many people interested in career and tactical education? Most of it comes from this changing economic landscape and we need to prepare our in entire infrastructure to meet this changing economic landscape. So for example, 40% of students earning an associate's degree or higher, but estimates are 64% of all jobs will at least require some associate's degree or higher by 2018. And then that gap tra is translating to 47 million job openings in the next 10 years that we need to fill with some form of career and technical education certification or uh, middle skills environment. So with that, that is some very specific industries that are going to be growing explosively. So for example, in Silicon Valley specifically, uh, the demand for nursing uh, is projected to increase by almost 30% by 2022, and we need to meet that need by providing certifications for students who are w uh, ready and willing to go into that type of field at earlier, earlier ages to help meet those needs. So the ideal environment would be for them to come out of high school with their diploma, with some form of certification, and already working in those types of occupations. Next is the skills gap in manufacturing. Um, manufacturing is not the way we traditionally think of manufacturing. It is changing rapidly, which I will show you with some of our curriculum later on. It is more along the lines of uh, robotics programming and learning how to use these very high-skilled machines. And it is becoming a, a large gap because we're not going to be fulfilling all of those manufacturing jobs that are going to become available. So as you see there, the San Diego area is projected to have an increase of 22.5% over the next uh, few years. And then the skilled jobs for accounting, so every new business needs accountants, needs assistants, needs all of these individuals to be able to manage all of those pieces. That's looking at about a 30% shortfall just in the North Bay area alone. Um, so that's where we're trying to meet is think proactively about where the economy is heading to meet the needs of the students and to meet the needs of the businesses that will be hiring them. There we go. So the next thing that aligns with that is there's been changes in policy. So within every Student Succeeds Act, there are some CTPE provisions that have been uh, labeled specifically within there. Uh, so, for example, uh, Title IV funding is now including uh, career counseling. So there's a lot more funding to help students figure out what they're interested in, also figure out what they're not interested in, and then start looking for a couple of careers and career pathways to get them there. And then Title II funding for CTE integration and professional development of CTE teachers so that now CTE is no longer looked at as that um, the, the piece of this larger puzzle that those kids go to. Now it is going to be for everybody. Every student can uh, take a CTE course and become a part of this and providing professional development for those teachers who are traditionally career tr uh, switchers and moving from a career in that field into teaching. They have different professional development needs and there will be funding to meet the needs of those students or of those teachers. Also, it adds a CTE as a core academic subject for a well-rounded student, so the entire bell curve of students now benefit from CTE and it's recognized within uh, federal legislation to meet the needs of those individuals. And we're is encouraging use of career readiness indicators and state accountability systems. So are we just getting students college ready or are we getting them career ready as well? And using those indicators to meet the needs of the students and so that there's also accountability for these systems as well. And more Title II for, uh, professional development funds for career and technical educators, again, to meet the needs of those educators who are coming into the classroom from a prior job. let's talk about components, right? And when we think about components of a comprehensive CTE program, there's a couple of things that we sat down and thought through of if we're going to move into a blended learning environment for CTE, what will that look like and what does it need to have? So when you think about it, we're thinking, how can I help my students? How can I help them search for jobs, search for things that they're interested in, get an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, and then ultimately what comes next? What job are they going to get? Where are they going to work? Is there jobs available within their chosen field that they are interested in? So our idea was we need to give students the ability to explore. 
They need to see what they are interested in, path they want to take, also rule out the things that they're not interested in. So they have that exploratory phase where they come in, they're looking at a couple of different uh, courses, a couple of different paths in uh, later middle school before junior high, before they go on to high school and start moving into that space. So they can be exposed to this at earlier and earlier ages and know the direction that they want to take later on. And then ultimately, any skills that you earn in career and technical ed need to be successful in certification, right? So if we're developing content, we're developing curriculum, it has to lead to a certification so that students can have a nationally recognized certification and move on and get their uh, job in, in their position that they're interested in. So that was another piece that needed to go into this. And are we preparing them for that certification? Fuel education is not a certifying body. Those are uh, national or even international entities. So we need to prepare them to take those outside tests and ensure that our curriculum is aligned to what's going to be on those tests so that students will uh, pass those certification tests. And then those soft skills, right? How are we developing teamwork and leadership skills to be successful in the workplace? Yes, you might be able to take the content and gain the certification, but can you work as a part of the team to be able to work within this larger piece? And that led into the creation of this entire career and technical education product. So beyond that, are we also preparing them for the ACT and workforce readiness certifications to prepare students for where they're going and, and see that there are um, baselines that they need to meet to be able to get that certification ultimately where they want to go. So when we think about this and we think about cultivating student interest and what a traditional career and technical education program looks like in comparison with where a uh, blended learning, more online learning environment for career and technical education could look like. So when we think about it traditionally, here's what it looks like. Students are exploring, they're taking some skills-based courses, they, and then that might be the end of it. They go to take another exploratory course, they earn some more skills, but it's non-linear and it's not ultimately leading to a certification. So what we wanted to do was, okay, this is traditional. It's very um, based off of buildings and brick and mortar structures. And if you wanted to go and continue your certification, you had to be removed from your regular school, go to a vocational technical school or career and technical ed school. And we wanted to try and mitigate some of that and enable students to explore, see where they're going, and ultimately get to certification. And so that's where we cut that new path so that it's not connected to a specific brick and mortar building. Any school or any uh, entity can implement a career and technical education program using our system. Um, whether or not you wanted to use our teachers or your teachers, however you want to do it, it's about meeting the needs of your locality and your local school system. So for CTE specifically in California, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were meeting the needs of what um, the state of California was looking at and what they identified as their biggest needs. And you see them all listed here for the industry and the sectors so that we're preparing students for where the economy is going and how we can help them get there for the areas with the largest amount of job growth and opportunity to be met with uh, greater success. So why fuel ed for CTE in California? Well, currently, over 170 plus uh, A through G approved courses. And that is including many CTE courses and uh, the ability to meet the needs of every student, every district, and ensure that it's standards aligned with state standards. Um, we have 15 plus pathways that align well to the California CTE standards and more than additional CTE courses with uh, certification exam preparation to prepare students for those types of exams and where they're going to go. Beyond that, there's the career exploration courses for a variety of high demand career clusters. Those, that's that exploratory piece that students are getting in where it's not necessarily ending um, in a, a certification test, it's more exploratory. So I wanna look at manufacturing and business accounting and we put a couple units together to help them understand that. Or healthcare and IT, what does that look like? How, what are a couple units for that to look like? And students can go in there and, and explore within those at earlier and earlier ages. We also have the respected credentials. So over 100 plus CTE 
uh, courses, students have the opportunity to prepare for a wide variety of industry certifications. Some of these certifications are multiple courses to get. Others are you take a course, you take the test, you, you earn your certification as long as you pass. So that falls within that Adobe Certified Associate and the Microsoft Certified Specialist. So there's already courses built out. If you wanted to be a Microsoft Office Certified Specialist, you take your, you know, your Microsoft Word course, you take your certification, you earn your certification. Same for all of those for Adobe InDesign, um, Dreamweaver, Illustrator, all of those. And then CompTIA, those are one course and you earn your network security in very specific uh, pieces. But Ultimately, all of those courses lead into one larger certification. And there's also programmatic support as well um, for the career and technical incentive uh, grant program. So all of that is built in specifically for California as we continually work to build out our career technical ed program for California. Again, we also are offer supporting services. Like, yes, we have curriculum. Yes, we are implementing this and providing that across the board. But if you have additional needs or want, looking for specific things, we have the ability to meet those needs. So you can use our curriculum with our teachers. So if you only have two, te two students that are interested in a certified nursing assistance program, you can use our teachers and be able to still enable students to earn that certification within your locality. We also have the ability for the National Career Readiness Certification, so to prepare students for that work, those work keys assessments and give them that exam preparation to ensure that they're prepared. Then career explorations available within English and Spanish. So this is more of the um, counseling piece that is already built in. Students can go in in English or Spanish, match their skills, interest, take a couple career counseling uh, tests and see what they're interested in build their resume, and then also research job fields, colleges, as well as scholarships within that one space. And then business skills development. That's that soft skills, non-academic skills that students need to thrive in the workplace. You know, business handshakes, making sure you're making eye contact, how to work as a part of a team. All of that is built into those supporting services to ensure that we're meeting the, you know, the well-rounded student in all needs that they might have. And then ultimately career and technical student organizations as well. Um, if students want to go into the business accounting and still be a part of future business leaders of America, we can help you uh, establish those types of chapters through our partnership with Skills USA. So students can still have that traditional uh, group learning environment that they would be working in and have a part of the, those much larger pieces. So it's not just a student sitting in front of a computer learning this way. It's about meeting the needs of the student. Um, however it is that you see fit. So any of those pieces, that can be built in. So in the fall of 2017, there are California course offerings and pathways. This is what we are going to be offering. All the way down across the board, agriculture, arts, and media, and then there's the actual pathways built within those. So as you can see, there's the clusters, and then there's those pathways that are built out. I'm not gonna go through every single one because there's too many, and it's about meeting the needs of the students and allow them to explore. If you wanted to go a little deeper about California requirements, funding, alignments, we have built out a, a website specifically for California CTE. It has all the approved course listings. It has uh, Perkins, where to find Perkins funding to enable all of this. And then more resources on white papers for the research that we've done to put this in, what videos are there so you can see how this works, how this could function, and then case studies as well that we have done for implementing uh, CTE specifically within California. Now, I'm sure at this point you're trying to figure out how this would work in a blended learning environment because that's the big thing that everybody's talking about, right? Everybody's moving online. Everybody's moving into a blended learning environment. How would this work in my school system in a, a career and technical education space where they need to have lots of hands-on learning? I'll explain that and go a little deeper into what blended learning is, make sure that we all kind of understand, but also where we are going as a, a, a K-12 economy of schooling. So the new normal, right? In 2000, 45,000 students took an online course. By 2019, 50% of high school courses will be delivered online in some form. It's projected, but that's where things are going. 
and students, we need to be preparing them for where we are going, and that's where this online and blended learning instruction comes in. Because even if they want to go on to higher education, it is going to be moving in that direction as well. 2003, 10% of students were taking a, a course in higher education. Now, 50% of all post-secondary courses uh, are going to be online. And it's not just specific online courses. Every single uh, university that I see that is very large in research universities has some form of an online component where you can go and get online degrees from bachelors all the way up through doctorate. And that's where the entire market is shifting to. Now, in K-12 specifically, what is growing in the past five years is, yes, homeschooled has grown, virtual schools, online cyber charters, but the biggest growth has been blended learning in um, K-12 and uh, regular charter schools in more traditional learning environments because it's where we are going to meet the needs of the students at their point of need, and that's the idea of where um, online and blended learning instruction comes from. It's not a replacement of anything. It's another tool in the toolbox to meet the needs of students. So the definition of blended learning, right, is it's about combining the best of online delivery with the best features of a classroom and marrying them together to enable us to provide a personalized learning environment and allow thoughtful reflection and differentiation based off of individual student needs. And it is a continuum. Like, it's not going to look the exact same way at every school, in every school system, in every classroom. It's about you know, meeting students at their point of need, also meeting teachers at their point of need and readiness for moving into a blended learning environment. And if you are using our curriculum in career and technical education, you've been teaching a, a nursing program for many years and you have a live lesson that you use in the classroom, it still works. Our system is flexible enough to enable you to still use that lesson and be able to do that physically and not take away from or and it becomes an addition to what we're working on. That's the idea is about flexibility and, and meeting the needs of the teachers as well. So there's a couple of models for how this can work um, for blended learning in CTE. Um, there is a rotational model. Um, for any elementary teachers, you, this would be pretty recognizable for how this could work. Um, for high school and career and technical eds, it, it, it might not, um, it might be something new, but it's really not that new. It's, a, it's the same idea that we've done for many years. So you can have students rotate through a lab or through stations if you have a couple of computers off to one side, or even individually as well based off of their students' needs. So you could then be grouping students, they're working on a live project with you, and you're giving a, a live instruction. Over here off to the corner, students are working on content on their own and working through that piece. And then you could have another group where they're doing group work and actually working on a lab for any of these number of courses. And you can continually move it that way. So it helps to break up the way that the course runs and you're meeting the needs of students individually. Flex would be more of a, you, you're using an online platform, you're using fuel education to be able to meet the needs of students, but you have face-to-face -face support for those individuals, and they would have fluid schedules. This works very well for you know, uh, adult learners or alternative education programs, however it is that you want to do it. I've done it where we did a virtual school and students had to come 20 hours a week and flexibly how they wanted to do that. Um, but we had traditional certified teachers there to meet the needs of students as well as give live lessons based off of what they needed, and it was based off of appointments. And however you wanted to make that look, you can make it look that way. Next is the idea of self-blend, right? So if you can't get um, career and technical education to work within your traditional schedule for whatever reason. So students could have their regular traditional schedule, they're still working through school, and then they're taking one or more courses online. You could do it so that you have an eighth period that is just a virtual block where students are moving to one classroom and taking that classroom virtually and they're all working in different pathways. That's another way that this can work to be implemented. And then there's an enriched program. So sometimes students are at a physical school, other times they're working remotely from home or from a satellite campus of some form to be able to meet their needs and be flexible. Um, the idea of blended learning is to get um, time to be the variable and then mastery to be the constant. And however we need to do that 
is to help meet the needs of those students so that mastery is the one thing that continually charges forward as students work through their curriculum. And then there's program options. How can we implement this? If I was a school system looking at this, what could this look like? What are some different programs to meet the needs of my unique students and my unique school district? Well, traditionally, there's the comprehensive pathway for certification. I say it's traditional because kids are coming in, they know what they want to do, they know what they're looking at, they know what pathway they want to take. They're taking a full pathway to certification and they know this coming in at ninth grade. That is uh, not always, uh, that is sometimes, that is not always up to date. Like some, some students want that, not every kid is ready for that. In accelerated pathway for certification, so that is more of a modified pathway to certification. It's still the full certification that students uh, would be receiving, and, but it, it's a little bit more accelerated. So now we've modified it. Students are coming in at like 10th grade, 11th grade, realizing that they need to figure out what they're going to do. And so now they're working through that modified CTE pathway and gaining their full certification um, with their two years left. That's you're working to identify those students and bring in additional support. You can do it in a lab or do it in more of a flex setting, however you want it to do. You know your, the needs of your students best. And this is uh, what I see happening most is that accelerated pathway for certification if you ha don't have a CTE program yet. Um, the next option is that short CTE pathway to certification. And that is for focusing on at-risk students, students at risk of dropping out, students at risk of not being um, in, engaged in schooling. This is more of a, you're going to take a course, you're going to gain a certification to get them back into the fold. So you can do that through um, Microsoft certifications, Adobe certifications, um, even the network security ones. This is to get those kids back engaged in school and, and be able to say, okay, if you take this course, you're going to get an industry-recognized certification and be able to focus again. And then that fourth option is just to expand options for all students. It's difficult to hire and enable students to take multiple courses and electives because you have to hire a bunch of teachers to be able to do that. We have uh, many electives for students to be able to take that are more of a one-off course that have things that they're interested in. So if you have a student that wants to go off to Stanford and become an engineer, well, we have courses in green technology that they could be taking in high school to be able to meet the needs of middle school and high school students and provide a more extensive course offering to students and to help them get exposed to more content as they move forward. So dig a little deeper now into the various pathways, courses, and certifications that are available that are California specific. So here you can see within the agriculture piece, the, these are the courses that would be available to students, arts, media, and entertainment, and then also the game design and integration, which is of high interest to students. And then here you also see that energy environment and utilities for students who are interested in more of the, the green technologies as well as engineering. Here's this, uh, the business and finance, as well as uh, education and child development family services to help uh, prepare students who are wanting to work into that field. And then um, for the health science and medical uh, technology, uh, many courses available there for students to be able to take for full uh, certifications. And I, I know that I'm going through this pretty quickly. If you wanted to see this in more in depth, again, you can visit Fuel Education in California CTE to be able to meet the needs that you have so you can see more in depth of what's available to you. Now, for achieving certification, so there's base and advanced certifications, right? So the base credentials would be the NACTI credentials and the Microsoft Office uh, Specialist credentials. The advanced credentials would be more of the, the medical as well as many of the CompTIA network security ones, so the certified nursing assistant, certified pharmacy tech, but also Adobe, and then the business and accounting one. So 14 base and then 16 advanced credentials for, uh, those are the recommended exams that students are able to take. And then 
eight certifications earnable in one semester. Those are for those at-risk students to be able to take those and earn that certification and be able to put that on the resume. And then three certifications within one year. Those are those network security pieces that CompTIA Network Plus Security Plus. Uh, when I was in the district office, students that took those network security uh, courses, I would actually hire them and they would work for the school district because I was able to bring them into the fold, give them a job, and, and pay them over the summer to do a lot of the work that a lot of my technicians needed to do anyways. So that's one way that you kind of create your own job pipeline through these types of certification courses. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hop on over to the live demo. And I'm going to give me a second and I will share my screen. Okay, so students log in, students, teachers, administrators through Fuel Education, everybody logs in through the same uh, peak.getfueled.com up here at the top. And this is a bit of an atypical view of what students would see, but each one of these is course cards. Students can see where their, what their grade is, they can flip it over, they can see all of their quick checks, everything that they've done. And the idea is to give as much information to students as possible. For a teacher, teachers work from a dashboard from peak.getfield.com. I can see activity alerts, so I can see if students' grades are below 70%, who my best performing students are, any new alerts, as well as my sections, because these activity alerts feed over to these enrollments. So it says enrollments, not students, because I might have one student enrolled in multiple courses at the same time. Um, so for example, if a student's grade drops below 70%, it will show up here as one student needs attention, and I'm able to view their performance as they work through it. I'm going to dive now into an actual course. So this is a manufacturing course, and as you can see here for manufacturing, so there's kind of two main uh, learning environments. Um, Blackboard is the current learning management system, and it's going to be transitioning to uh, Brightspace. Uh, but the content comes through Cengage and then Intellitech. Um, Intellitech is specifically for the manufacturing courses. So for example, here is a fundamental uh, manufacturing uh, test course. So it works them through an orientation. They have various units that they must work through. It is linear. But as the instructor, I have the ability to show them one unit at a, at a time, all units, or even able to you know, add or subtract assignments based off of what they need. So what would happen is you would come through, you click on Introduction to Robotics, and you'd be able to open into this environment for students. So here is an example of, um, in Intellitech, this is an industry standard of software. The students have to work within this space because it is uh, PC-specific software for the manufacturing courses. Not true for every course, but just for the manufacturing. And they would be working through this type of an environment where they are actually creating and uh, programming this robot. So you can see that this robot here is picking things up and moving them over. This takes quite a bit of skill to be able to program the robot to do that. And that is one piece of the many different aspects of the manufacturing courses. Stop that. The next environment is uh, this Cengage piece. So here, this is a Java course. Um, and many times you can see that it's the same. Um, but for Java courses or programming courses, they might have to take some additional software. For us and the, our uh, functions, it's all built in. So it builds in through MindTap for Cengage, and then students would actually be doing their coding within the browser, within their course, so that it goes and goes back to the teacher as they build their portfolio of work. Within this Cengage space, there's a lot of additional tools for students to have access to. Teachers can subscribe RSS feeds for industry standard articles. Um, they would be building their career portfolio, their resume, all within the course itself as well as the full textbook is available to them. They can see what progress they are on, so they very quickly say, okay, I have done this many assignments, uh, here's my grade, I have this many assignments left, and be able to work through that. 
um, study hub for being able to collect all of my uh, notes, everything that I need, as well as a read speaker for students that need a uh, the courses read to them. And many of these spaces, uh, spaces it will actually read to them and have um, a, a voice be talking to them, as well as what their homework is, flashcards, a, a dictionary, glossary, many more. Um, if you wanted to go more in depth, we could schedule a more in depth uh, assignment, uh, excuse me, demo. And the idea here is flexibility. Teachers can rearrange assignments, they can build content, they can add whatever they want, and that helps to bring in and bridge that gap between what was traditionally taught, the curriculum that we have provided here, and gives value to the, all of the curriculum that teachers have built. Um, many times that I've seen in, in traditional career and technical education courses, teachers are building curriculum as they go, and this helps to bridge that gap because all of that work is still valuable that they can put in here. That is a very quick demo. All right. So to recap everything is career readiness pathways, exploration of certification. How are we getting students to explore what they're interested in, figure out a pathway that they want to take, take courses in that pathway, earn certifications within that field that they are looking for, and then be able to earn that job. And that's the idea to get them there. So we are a comprehensive, all-inclusive CTE program. So if you do not currently have a CTE program, ours is comprehensive, everything is in there, we can get you started. It is an out-of-the-box solution. We want to help students explore what they want to do. We want to help them figure out where they want to go, why they're coming to school, and ultimately get a job to be able to support themselves and their families. And then provide strong academic and technical skills-based content. Like this is college-level content. It is not, it is rigorous, it is difficult, and it, we want to make sure that we want to prepare students for where they're going within these industry standards. And with that, including within these pathways, certification test prep. Once they get through the pathway, when they get to the final course, they will have the opportunity to take multiple uh, tests that mirror the certification tests. That will help them to get prepared for any certifications they want to take and to prepare them for the tests because they need to be able to pass those tests as well. And then also that workforce readiness test preparation as well. The test preparation is key to this because it, many times it is skills-based and they need to show that they know what they are doing and are able to do it. And the only way to do that is through practicing, taking those tests over and over again. And then the soft skills development. Teamwork, leadership skills, and be able to work together to be able to uh, create and, and develop these new and, and different uh, project-based learning environments. And for here, if you wanted to go a little deeper, visit our California CTE site for even more content. It'll go even deeper than what I was able to do at this point, um, but I believe that I've hit my point for uh, Q&A. All right, well, Dan, thank you so much uh, for, I mean, really very extremely informative presentation. Uh, and uh, we do have some questions uh, that have come in from the audience and we still have some time left, so we'll plow straight into those. Um, you did. You talked about the various ways that schools might uh, might incorporate um, fuel ed courses. Um, mm -hmm. If a school wants to uh, request a personalized demonstration, a school district is looking to get a personalized mm -hmm. demo. You know, how do they go about doing that? Uh, well, one way is you can go to fueleducation.com, go to the California website, and request a demo. Like there, there is a space to request a demo. Um, right from that website, and then that would enable you to get a, a, a personalized demo um, virtually. And then ultimately, if you wanted to go deeper and have like an in-person, super in-depth conversation, that, that is also done through that website as well. Okay, great. All right. And uh, Todd uh, asked a question. He's interested in the adult education side of this, and he wants to know about mm -hmm. how the program works with K-12 adult education. 
And then as, as a follow-up, he wanted to know whether there are any adult education schools that have already implemented fuel education in their agencies, and, and if so, so which ones? Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure of specific ones. Um, that would be, I'd have to look it up and see what's available. I know that I was just at the California Adult Education Conference in Long Beach, um, and there was a lot of interest in the adult education aspects of these CTE courses. Because it is college-level content, they are available and can be used for ad adult learners. Um, it is very rigorous for uh, adults to be able to work through it. You would be able to just you, take these courses and be able to work them directly into an, an adult learning environment as well. Okay. All right. And uh, on an, another tack from the audience is, and you may, I think you mentioned this earlier in, uh, in on one of your slides. Can you talk a mm -hmm. bit about whether all the are other courses all available in Spanish? Uh, just about all of them are, are available in Spanish. And to jump off of that too, what you can do as well, um, because we do have blended learning curriculum and is online, you can kind of marry these together. Um, so what we've done in the past is we have an, a, a separate product in our product line for ELL, and you can actually kind of stack it um, so that you can have students in an ELL blended learning course and also taking the career and technical education courses as well. So you can have those stacked. And on the other side of that, we have Spanish courses available as well, or, and, and many other um, world languages and you can stack those. So for example, if you have a student that is interested in hospitality and tourism and they have their, uh, grew up in their English speaking environment, you can marry that with uh, stacking a Spanish course, so they're learning Spanish along with their career and technical education program. Okay, all right, well thank you very much for clarifying all of that. You're welcome. I want to turn uh, back to uh, Another slide that you mentioned, uh, which, was, which was the availability of uh, uh, FuelEd provides some online teachers to, uh, to, mm -hmm. with the, uh, to, to assist with the instruction. Can you talk a little bit, about, a little bit more about how that works and are the teachers certified and, and do you offer instruction with all the courses? Can you just talk a little bit more about that interaction and, and what FuelEd does offer on the teaching side? Absolutely. So we have about a thousand teachers and is growing every year um, that are state certified and they have their full teaching license and they teach online either part time, full time, whatever it is that they want to do. And what we do is we work through a process so they have their teaching license that is they are certified in their specific states and then we find the states that are requesting these courses and then they become the teachers of those courses. And we have that massive pool of individuals who are teaching those courses. And then how this looks is, so it, 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 on a small scale, right? And so if I'm just, I want to have a IT program that I can't have and I can't get um, individuals to come and teach these courses. Um, so these teachers would be certified in California for those courses, we go through and do all the legwork to find them and make sure that they have all of the correct certifications in line to do that. And they would be the teacher of record for those courses. So it is it's just like in a traditional learning environment, they are giving the grades, they are meeting IEP requirements, they are, are meeting all of the needs of their students and differentiating based off of the needs of the student, as well as um, you can I always want to have a mentor, quote unquote, at the site for the students to have that first point of contact with, somebody physical who they can talk with. And that can be a certified teacher, that can be a, a paraprofessional, that can be a parent, any number of people. And they are not the ones that are giving the grades. They are the ones that are coaching the student through the content. They are helping to ensure that they are staying on track and doing what they're supposed to be doing, or if they fall behind or they run into technical issues, they become that first point of contact, as well as ensuring the communication between um, student and teacher and parent is, is, or is occurring, so they become the manager of all of those pieces. Okay, all right. And just to clarify, I may have missed this, you may have just answered it right now, but uh, 
someone was also asking about whether the teachers have VC ed credentials, uh, which is now required by CDE beyond teaching credentials. I don't, I can't remember if you covered that or not. Yeah. So what we do is we are constantly looking at any of the state requirements for teaching all of our various courses and this it, the same as if a teacher is teaching in a brick and mortar traditional school they have to meet those same requirements that those teachers do there's no difference so even though they're teaching online it's the same as uh, requirements as if they were teaching in a brick and mortar setting okay all right thanks and uh, mm -hmm. one other uh, we have just a, uh, about two or three more questions from the audience um, which CTE pathways offer certification exam preparation? Uh, so the, the main certification exam preparation ones are, is more of the clusters, so the manufacturing mm -hmm. cluster, the uh, health cluster, IT, manufacturing, I'm trying to remember all of them, uh, hospitality and agriculture. Those are the ones that will be offering right. um, the certification exam preparation. Okay. All right. Great. And towards the end of the presentation, you, you made reference to uh, an LMS um, that you're going to be uh, transitioning to from Blackboard, and someone in the audience uh, is trying to rem is trying to find out what the name of that LMS was. Oh, uh, so that is Brightspace. So currently, okay. for the fall, um, our CTE courses, met, uh, especially the Pathways, will be on Blackboard. Um, but some will be moving to Brightspace, and that is an individual course selection. And you'll know, okay. and we'll go through all the training for all of that. Okay. And the same person also wanted uh, to uh, know the name of the software um, for the manufacturing piece that you mentioned. So this, yeah. So the software, it's through a company called Intellitech who built a lot of it. Um, that software is a part of the course itself, and it becomes – Mm -hmm. it, it, when you enroll a student in the course, the downloads are available for you to be able to install that on whatever you need to. So with the manufacturing, it, it has specific IT technical requirements, but when you purchase the course, the software comes with it. Okay. All right. Uh, and what, oh, another question just popped in. Uh, do you offer CNA uh, certified nurse assistant program? Do you have a program for that? Yes, we do. We have a certified nursing assistant and certified pharmacy tech, and then uh, dental assistants actually coming out in the fall as well. Okay, terrific. Well, thank you for that. Well, uh, that is we have run through uh, all the questions that have come in from the audience, so I think we probably should just call it a day at that point. Um, uh, you know, this was a fantastic uh, introduction to the programs, and, and Dan, I really appreciate what you did. So uh, thank you for an excellent presentation. I'd also like to thank Fuel Education for its support today. Um, and a final reminder to everyone, and some of the audience were asking about this earlier, we are going to be sending out an email to everyone who was on the call today when the recording of the webinar is ready, and you'll be able to download the slides and everything else at that point. So look for that in your email box in the next day or two. Um, but that's about it. Uh, Daniel, again, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to everyone who took an hour today to join us. And this concludes today's webcast. Goodbye. Hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webcast. My name is Andrew Barber, and I'm a senior contributing editor here at eSchool News. I'll be acting as the moderator for today's presentation, which is sponsored by Fuel Education. And today we're going to be discussing how California schools can use the flexibility of Fuel Education's career and technical education courses to launch or enhance their own CTE programs. And we're also going to view a live course demo of Fuel Education's career readiness pathways. Now, before I hand things over to our speaker today, I just want to take a few moments to highlight a couple of items 